Have you ever said something to this effect? Something like, I'm just not creative. Or what about, I've never been artistic or good at design. Well, my friend, this week I am smashing those misconceptions in the face. And I'm going to show you a simple process for becoming a better designer as a web developer. Are you ready? Let's go. What is up, self-maders, and welcome to another episode of the Self-Made Web Designer Podcast. I talk to so many people all the time who are convinced that they are unable to be more creative, to be a better designer as a web developer. And most of the time, when we see someone that really excels in a creative area, we tend to say things like, man, they are so gifted, or I wish I had half of their talent. And, and I get how it would be easy to think that something so impressive could only come by supernatural means, by some gift from the Lord. But the truth is, is that there's no one innately born with an ability to do anything. We all start out at the same level, pooping and peeing ourselves and waiting on our moms and dads to help us out. And every single skill, either creative or technical, comes from hard work, tons of practice, and good feedback from some type of instruction. And this week, we're gonna talk about it. We're, we're gonna go there. But before we do, I wanna invite you to sign up for the Self-Made Web Designer Newsletter each week and maybe sometimes every other week, you're going to get something straight to your inbox that's going to encourage you and help you become a better web designer, web developer, freelancer, and heck, even a better person. So go to selfmadewebdesigner.com and sign up. And of course, there's going to be links in the show notes for you to sign up that way as well. All right. Are you ready to learn how to become a better designer as a web developer? Okay, let's go. All right, let's do a little history lesson because I feel like this is important, okay? In ancient Greece, philosophers actually believed that there were these inspirational goddesses, okay, that influenced or maybe even completely took over you whenever you did anything creative or artistic. And those goddesses or influencers were called muses. And you're probably familiar with that because when somebody has a creative inspiration, they often speak of their muse, of their source of inspiration. And despite all that we know about neuroscience and how the brain works today, so many people still believe that something like this happens when someone is a creative person or has a creative moment. I spoke recently to a group of web developers and the main topic was about freelancing. And I'll leave a link to that workshop and you can actually watch it as well. And at, at the end of the workshop, I had time for some Q&A and design and creativity came up a lot. I was talking to a lot of web developers who are true programmers, right? And the attitude of almost the entire group was that design and creativity is a skill that you either have or you don't. And the conversations I had afterwards when people were coming up to me, asking me questions, talking about my background and, and past and everything, all of the conversations tended towards folks trying to figure out the secret to my creativity. They're like, you had to have gotten this from somewhere other than just hard work and practice. And some of them would say, oh, you were a musician. That's what it was. That's how you got creative. And yet I know so many musicians that are great at their instrument, but are horrible at design. And the truth is, is there isn't anything sexy about how to be more creative or a better designer as a web developer. Do you wanna know what the secret is? I'll, I'll say it, it's not earth shattering. All you've got to do is do the work. And I'm pausing for dramatic effect, even though it's not all that dramatic. If you want to be more creative, if you want to be a better designer as a web developer, you have to treat it just like you would learning a new development language, learning how to create a website or create an app or anything else in life. You have to spend time learning and practicing what you don't know. There's no secret. There's no six easy steps. There's just a lot of time 
and effort. And the reason that that doesn't connect with people is the same reason that the diet industry makes billions of dollars a year on some new fad diet is because it's a tough pill to swallow. That if you want to get better, or if you want to lose weight, or if you want to do whatever, improve your life, you're just going to have to work hard. And over time, you're going to see small incremental steps, but eventually you'll look back and you'll see that you've made a lot of progress. And the same is true to become a better designer as a web developer. If you want to be more creative, if you want to be a better designer, it's possible no matter who you are or what background you have, no matter what giftings or talents you feel like you were born with. There are some proven steps that you can take to up your skills. Are you ready to learn what those are? Okay, here we go. Number one, the first step in becoming a better designer as a web developer is to create some designs. <laughs> it's actually pretty straightforward. If you want to be more creative, if you want to be a better designer, you just have to start designing. You just have to start creating. And listen, the designs are going to be bad at first, and that's okay. I'm not trying to demotivate you. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. We all start out really sucky. And the same is true when it comes to web development or programming. You didn't expect yourself to create a mock Facebook app from scratch, from your brain, the first time you sat down to write code, did you? No. So why would you feel that way about being more creative as a web developer? I've written songs for as long as I can remember. And my first one was about a kid who could skateboard. And and it came complete with a colored drawing of the kid on his skateboard, right? And I think I fit the whole song into those little dotted lines with the lines on top so that teach you how to write straight in kindergarten. You know, that was my first song. And trust me, it was not Grammy material. And even today, I listen back to songs that I wrote less than 10 years ago, and I cringe a little bit. But the truth is, is you have to start somewhere. So just start one design at a time. Eventually, you're going to look back and see a progression from when you first started. And even designs that you thought were awesome at the time will make you a little embarrassed, embarrassed to show anyone. But an award-winning design doesn't come until you've done the hard work and sucked for a really, really long time time. So get used to not being the best at designing. The only way to improve is to be okay with being bad at first and just start designing. Number two, immerse yourself. If you want to be more creative, if you want to be a better designer as a web developer, you have to become a student of really quality web designs, right? You, you don't come up with great designs out of thin air. You, you take in a ton of designs and then you piggyback off of what you like. And it seems like you're stealing, right? But it's not. Even the best do it. In 1920, a guy named T.S. Eliot, if you've heard of him before, said that immature poets imitate, mature poets steal. And the funny thing is, is that quote has been attributed to different artists over the years. Everyone from Picasso to a guy named Igor Stravinsky, who's a Russian composer. And the point is, all of us are creating off of borrowed ideas. Even the Bible says it. Ecclesiastes 1.9 says, there's nothing new under the sun. I'm starting to preach up in here. Even the best and most innovative ideas are just a mixture of things that we've already seen or somebody has already thought of. So, so it's important to constantly be on the lookout for good designs. Bookmark websites like Dribble or Behance or maybe Muse.li, right? Musely. And there that word again is Muse, right? It's right there in the title of it. And when you see something you like, save it somewhere for reference. I, I have a Pinterest board that I use to pin all of the designs that I find that impress me. And I also use it when I start a new design. I scour the internet for things that will work for the project I'm designing or developing for. You, you can't be more creative as a web developer unless you begin to immerse yourself in other people's creativity. It has to come from somewhere. So go find some inspiration. Number three, get good feedback. Many of us are probably familiar with a guy named Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, right? It's a great book. It's fantastic. If you haven't read it, I, I want to encourage you to read it. And in it is this idea that if you see someone that is highly skilled at something, we're talking about like pro level, right? Then you can assume that they've spent a minimum of 10,000 hours practicing 
or developing that skill. And, and here's the thing, though. That's only partially true. <laughs> Malcolm's conclusions actually come from another great book called Peak by Anders Ericsson. And Anders is what's called an expertise scientist or something fancy and, and, and really impressive like that. He, he studied so many people who have become the highest skilled professionals in multiple fields and tried to determine what they did to get there. And then he tested his hypotheses on students. And, and he found, like Malcolm Gladwell did in, Out, in Outliers, that someone must spend at least 10,000 hours developing a skill to reach a pro level. But you also have to have good instruction and make adjustments as a result of feedback that you're getting from instructors along the journey of your practicing in order for that practice to be worth anything. In other words, you can't just practice. You have to practice, get feedback, and make adjustments. And that is the loop for becoming a better designer as a web developer. You practice, you get good feedback, and you make adjustments. So if you're having a hard time giving yourself feedback about your designs, pull in someone that's better at it than you are. They don't have to be a pro. They just need to be slightly ahead of you. And there's great places for you to post your work. There's some subs in Reddit that are great for it. There's great Facebook groups. So put your stuff out there. I know that that can seem scary, but man, feedback can go a long way to you getting better. Whatever you do, don't just make things and then walk away. There's a reason you would get bonus points on your exams in math class if you corrected your work. You'll learn more from going over what you're doing wrong and trying to correct it than you do from just doing it. Number four, explore other creative outlets. Any type of artistic endeavor that you take can actually help you be more creative as a web developer. In the book, The Talent Code, a guy named Daniel Coyle talks about how scientists have tied something called myelin in your brain to being great at something, to being a, an, an expert at it. So bear with me here. I know we're getting a little nerdy, but this is really cool stuff. So signals or thoughts in your brains are carried on what's called axons, right? Think of axons like a path in your head that transports information back and forth, telling your body what to do or not do. And when you do something repeatedly, those axons get wrapped in myelons, which makes carrying that information much easier. And the same is true when you take the same path in the woods over and over again. And I, I grew up in the country, and so I'm very familiar with this, right? We would go romping in the woods, me and my cousins and my sister. We would go in the woods, we would take our four-wheelers or our UTVs, and we'd drive around back there between bushes and trees and all sorts of stuff, and we'd create these paths. But if we didn't go on one of those paths for a long period of time, sometimes even just a month, and we tried to go on it again, all of a sudden, shrubs had grown up and, and weeds had grown back and we had to come and move rocks out of the way. But if we were consistent at it, if we just kept doing it over and over again, the pathway became smooth. And the same is true for the things that you do. The path to learning, the path to getting better actually becomes easier the more you do it. If you work on any creative skill, it's going to make learning another skill that much easier. And the reason is you've built up that path. You've built up myelins around the axons that help creativity. So if you get stuck in web design, try doing something else that's creative to get the juices flowing. So when I was on staff at the creative team at my church, the creative pastor over us, her name was Joni, awesome lady, would bring clay to our meetings and set it in the center of the table. And then she'd encourage us to make something out of it while we were talking. And the whole point was to help us prime the pump of our heads in a creative direction so that we could get the most out of our time together. And the same is true if you want to be more creative, if you want to be a better designer as a web developer. Read some poetry, draw something, write a short story, just do something creative to stoke your creativity. Number five, and the final step in becoming a better designer as a web developer is to find the source of the style. Every new trend in web design has 
an origin point, right? So if you see a design you like, it was likely inspired by someone who inspired someone who was in turn inspired by someone else. So if you want to get more creative as a web developer, it's worth it to spend some time trying to find where a specific design style originated from. My best work has always come from a single original artist and not from someone else's web design. In other words, I found works of arts that I liked and I figured out who made them. And then I used those ideas that I got from those artists to inspire websites I was building. For instance, there's a designer that I absolutely love and I'll link to her in the show notes. Her name is Christiana Cusiero and I hope I'm saying her name right. I created a site for a conference that was heavily influenced by her style. So if you see a website or an app that you like, dig a little deeper. Try to find the original piece of inspiration. You'll likely come up with some of your best designs as a result. So hopefully by now you see that creativity isn't something that you just happen upon. It's not something that you were born with. You get good at what you put your energy towards. The bottom line is, is it all boils down to how much effort you're willing to give to be more creative and a better designer as a web developer. So are you ready to get better at your designs as a web developer? Okay. You've, you've got your steps, right? You just start designing. You start getting feedback. You start immersing yourself in other good designs, right? You find the origin point of some of those design styles that are out there, and then you find other ways to be creative. You do those things, and you are bound to become a top-notch designer to be way more creative as a web developer. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was awesome hanging out with you again this week. And hey, next week, we're going to do it again. So make sure that you subscribe whatever platform you are listening or watching this podcast on so that you don't miss it because these episodes will come at you every single week. They show up right in your pocket or whatever device that you are listening or watching on. So it's been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next Wednesday at midnight, make sure you keep working hard and don't forget if you don't quit, you win.